Hi, this is Lily DeLeon again, and today I'm so excited to tell you that we're going to learn how to do Bargello embroidery. This is a sample of a Bargello embroidery coupled with some hardanger stitches here at the center. This is a hardanger design with a Bargello border. So we will take up a Bargello. I'll teach you the basic and I'll show you how to do a very easy design of uh, Bargello. So come and join me as I show you how to do this Bargello embroidery. Hello everyone, I'm back. This is Lily De Leon again of Dream Shine Shop and I'm going to show you how to do Bargello embroidery. Bargello is a very easy uh, form of embroidery. Sometimes it's called a Florentine needlework or needlepoint. So um, they say that it started in Europe in about 17th century. And so if you go to museums in, uh, in Europe and even in the US, you can see a lot of uh, work using um, uh, this Bargello or the Flor Florentine needlepoint. Um, for the last, uh, maybe two, two, weeks, two weeks ago, I posted on Facebook my project on uh, Bargello where I put it in a cushion of a footstool. I'll show you the picture if you were not able to see it on Facebook. So, um, it is a, a Bargello embroidery. So, what do you need to do a Bargello embroidery? Of course, uh, you need the fabric, either the fabric or a canvas. But canvas is hard to find here in the Philippines. So, we will just use the, the fabric. Uh, I have it two kinds of fabric. This, uh, there is a finer one and there is also um, bigger, bigger, um, bigger holes or big number. You have more, less number of stitches per inch. So this is a 19 count fabric, this darker one, and this is a 28 count fabric. I can also use the 25 count linen for, for Bargello. Okay, and for canvas, uh, it can go as low as 18 count or 20 count, whatever uh, you have available. So, um, so the fabric or the canvas, and then of course the thread. Defen depending on the fabric that you will use, uh, it can be, you can use, oh, I forgot to show you, I have some wool. You can, before they were using wool, wool thread but it's almost like like this this is cotton but uh, there is also about this size of wool which they really they usually use for the um, needle point these are pearl cottons from here to here this is size 3 this is the bigger the thicker the thickest size of pearl cotton size 3 but I don't usually use this because uh, it's very hard to find here in the Philippines a common one is the size 5. This is size 5 uh, pearl cotton. Before, or I think even now, they came with, um, before they came with this um, uh, skein, small skein. This is also number 5. But uh, the more popular one now is in this bigger skein. I think this is 25, 25 meters. This is about maybe 8 or 10 and this is the size 8 this is the one we use for our uh, hard hanger if you remember number si size 8 and 12 but I usually use size 8 for the 25 count linen oh this is you know I've had this for many years I didn't know that I had kept them I have a lot of uh, this uh, thread this is called retor mat it is spelled with an s retors mat but it is pronounced as retor mat it is cotton 
but it has it has matte finish so it's not as shiny as the as the pearl cotton pearl cotton is mercerized so that's for the thread that you can use uh, these threads are the ones I used for this project and the pearl cotton number eight are the ones I use for this pillow I think this is um, number five and this one I think this is retormat I've done this so many years ago and now I think I'm going to have them made into a throw pillow or maybe just an accent on a throw pillow so What's so interesting about Bergello is it's very, very easy. Sometimes you just have do one row and you just repeat the pattern without even looking at, the, at your pattern. You can continue on with your sewing. So it's very therapeutic and um, it's, uh, it's so easy. So you will enjoy doing it. Okay, so um, I'll show you a pattern of Bargello. This pattern is, um, you will use this same pattern, but you can either use different colors, maybe four times. Four times you will do this design in different colors, or maybe you can do, like use these four colors, uh, but do, using the same pattern. So I will show you, I will demonstrate to you how to do this. So you will need a pattern also. There are books that have um, uh, patterns. I'll show you some pictures of Bargello designs later. Okay, this is one that uses so many colors. And if you will notice in one color, in one group of color, you should have very dark, medium, and light. Like for example here, you have a very dark, medium, and light to be able to get the effect of these boxes. Actually, the pattern is supposed to cover the whole thing, but I started like this and I, I liked it. So I think I'll stop from here and I, maybe I can make it into a throw pillow with border around and just I want to show the like a step. Uh, so I like it that way. So I think I'll just finish doing this. In this, in this pattern, I only used one skein of each minatirapa if i am going to do the whole thing i may need to have two two skeins of the light because this part uses more thread than these parts i love it i love bargello it's so easy so with bargello it's best that you use uh, a hoop or whatever you can use that this is the regular embroidery hoop this um the round thing this is embroidery hoop when I did the stool, the, the one uh, that I uh, showed in the picture, the foot stool, I used this Q-snap. This is Q-snap, so they come in different uh, sizes. Now, I adjust yan. If you like it long or maybe a square, you will have four of this size, but this is rectangular. So I used two of this size and the... Uh, oh, so this is, this is the square. This is the square Q snaps. I'll show you how to do, how to use it. This is uh, a square Q snap. I'll show you later. This one is usually used for, actually for needle point. They come in different sizes. Madamian, uh, maybe maybe by the like this, maybe by the half inch. Maybe this is I don't know what size this is, and then this is one half more, and and more. So so and so forth. This is the one I use. So to do that, you just need like two of this because you can, it's so easy to assemble. You just, um, you know, match the slots of this uh, thing. So this is how it is. So if you want, you can disassemble it so it will not take so much space. And, uh, but when you use this, you will need some tucks. You need to need this tucks. Hmm. I have, I used to sell it, I don't know if I still have it. I have this, this container with the tax. These are, these don't rust. They, they are rust resistant. So, and then there is this, um, this thing that if you have to take it off, you just do like this and you can take off the, 
So I love, I love this kind of tops. So, but you can use the regular thumb tops that you can buy in bookstores. It, it won't matter. So, and usually I have, I have this magnet so I can, I can put my needle and even my scissors. This is so strong that you don't have to keep looking for the scissors if you need it. Okay, as I said, you, I'll show you how to use the Q-snaps. These are the ones that are holding the, the thread. So, um, if this is your fabric, I will not cut it. I will just show you how to, how to use it. I just do it like that. And then, you just snap. That's why they're called Q-snaps. And make sure that they are they are taut, not too, not too tight, but uh, it's better that they are taut when you do the Q-snap. So you do that all around and that will make your fabric or your canvas taut. So, so many things that you can use. It's better that you use the hoop or uh, something like this. Oh, this is another one. I use this for cross stitch and I love using this because uh, if you're embroidering and you're you want to hide the, the thread, the extra thread at the back, you can just flip it over. So, and you can put it on table or maybe on your lap. This is a lap stand. I still have a lot of this, maybe 10 pieces of that. So, those are the things that you will need. And of course, the tapestry needle. The thicker the thread, the bigger your tapestry needle. That's about it. So, we can start demonstrating our um, Bargello. So this is uh, Bargello uh, Tropillo uh, with Hardanger. This is actually a Hardanger design with a Bargello border. So this one used one color but in different shades. Like maybe here, one color but in different shades. Okay, following this pattern, following this pattern, I will just use a small, uh, here, I will use a small uh, piece of fabric to demonstrate our uh, Bargello. As I go, I will be giving you so many tips on, uh, on Bargello, so many tips, helpful tips. Um, okay, let me use this, this thread so I don't have to open so much. I'll, get, uh, I'll use two colors so I, you will see the difference. So this is our pattern. If you're going to start here, this is the whole of our fabric, and each line is the thread of our fabric. So one, two, three, four. That means if you come up from this hole, you count four threads, one, two, three, four, and then down. And then go up two threads, and then here, count four again, down, up here, down after four threads here. So in other words, you have to skip every time you move to the next stitch. Now, this is going down. So from here, you go down, you go down here. Up, one, two, three, four, and then go down in this hole. Up, and then down here. So here you count down, two here and then four, so actually six. So up here, count four threads and here. After that, now you will move on upward again. So skip two threads and here come up here, count four threads and down. Again, up two, four threads and then up two. But this time, after making one, you will make another. So they are side by side. So, and then up again by two, two stitches again side by side. And this one up by two, and then make three stitches, uh, skip it, I mean, count four threads, counting four threads. I'm sorry. So, here, these are four and these are five. After the five satin stitches, now you will go down. So, you will do the same mirror effect of these stitches on this side to do on the other side and we will end let's end here so we started here and we will end here okay so we can do that now 
on our fabric. Okay, so that's how you read your pattern. Now, I will demonstrate to you how to do it on our fabric. By the way, if you are using an embroidery hoop, even for cross stitch or any form of embroidery, make sure that this, this thing, the one that tightens the screw, is positioned on the, they call it the 10 o'clock position. That means, like, if you are going to look at the clock, this is the 12, 11, and 10. So, dapat, dandito siya sa left, sa left mo. So, this is how I'm going to hold it. Nandito siya sa, sa left. But if you are left-handed, you should be on the 2 o'clock. This should be on the 2 o'clock position. Okay? So, kasi, what you, your, your motion is like this. So, if this is on the 2 o'clock position, lagi siyang, it will always get entangled with this um, screw. So, position it. If you're right-handed, position the screw on the 10 o'clock position. So, Let's start, let me use this one, the number five. Okay. So, usually, I only, like for a cross stitch, I only use like half yard. But since you're going most using, uh, doing satin stitches, it uses a lot of thread. So maybe you can do more than, more than one yard or one yard. Let's do one yard. One yard is one stretch arm up to here. Okay, so I'll get. I'll cut this. Another tip. You know, when um, the thread, if you go like this and do the other side, I mean, like, feel which one is smoother. If you feel that it is smoother than the other side. So let's again. So this is rougher, and this is the smooth, smooth side, I think. Sometimes it's so hard. Sometimes it's hard. Oh no, I this is the smoother one. Okay. So if this is the smoother one, then that is where you put your knot. Why? Because your thread will be moving like this. Because if you are doing like that, it's rougher then it will fray more rather than using it this way. So that means you have to put your needle on the other side. Uh, let me use the smaller tapestry needle. And uh, remember, I taught you how to thread your needle like this. You just slide it. 